what if your favorite automation platform could directly create and interact with AI agents, making your development workflow smarter and faster than ever before? That's what we'll be building today. If you've been following the channel, you likely know NA10 as that incredibly versatile, often self-hosted workflow automation platform that connects to hundreds of different apps and services. Well, NA10 just got a significant boost. It recently introduced MCP, the model context protocol, and it can now take the role as both an MCP client and crucially for what we'll be building today, an MCP server. This means your N810 workflows can now become powerful custom tools accessible to AI applications like the GitHub Copilot agent in VS Code, Cloud Desktop, and others. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to set up N810 as an NCP server. It's surprisingly easy, actually. We're going to build real world tools to interact with GitLab for creating issues, editing files, stuff like that search through our Notion databases, as well as send messages on Discord on our behalf, all triggered directly by AI prompts within VS Code using the new GitHub Copilot agent mode. But before we jump into the demo, a quick personal note and a huge thank you. We recently crossed 2000 subscribers here on Let's Talk Dev. Seriously, thank you so much to all of you. Actually, we are at 2,130 subscribers. I should find a better place for this, this one right here. Much better. If you're new here, please subscribe. It means a lot and it really helps support the channel, especially as I'm working towards monetization. All right, let's get hands on and make our NA10 workflows even smarter. Just briefly, what exactly is this MCP thing I've mentioned? It stands for Model Context Protocol. In simple terms, think of it as a standard way for AI applications like the GitHub Copilot agent we'll be using to discover and interact with external tools and services. It defines how a tool provider, which acts as an NCP server, that's the role NA10 will play for us today, it can advertise its capabilities to different clients, which are usually AI agents or other AI applications. And then the AI applications acting as MCP clients can understand these capabilities and use the tools passing along relevant context from your work. Essentially, MCP is the bridge that lets AI leverage specialized tools like the powerful NA10 workflows you might already have. Okay, let's create a workflow in NA10 and let's add the first node. A quick note, if you are considering using NA10 Cloud, please sign up using my link below. It really helps the channel immensely. Actually, the NA10 Commission is one of the major revenue sources as this channel is not yet monetized by YouTube. So if we search here for MCP, you will find a node called MCP Server Trigger. This is how you create an MCP server and it's as simple as that really. Here you get a test URL and the production URL. This URL will be used in the client application to connect to this MCP server. You can add authentication if you'd like. And below with the path input, you can change the path of the URL for this MCP server. Now that we have our MCP server, we can start exposing some tools. A single MCP server can expose a bunch of tools, as you'll see in just a bit. But for the first tool, let's do something interesting. Let's add the GitLab tool. GitHub is also available if you want to try that out. We'll also configure the Discord tool, but we'll get back to it a bit later in the video. So first, we want a tool that helps us easily create issues on GitLab. If you don't know, GitLab has this workflow management site where you can create new issues, assign them and so on. And I want to use this tool to easily create new issues in GitLab directly from VS Code and actually have AI write them for me using code snippets and the exact context of the code I am working on. Now, writing these issues used to be such a flow breaker. You'd have to go out of your code editor, interact with some website, create an issue, figure out what to write in those issues. Most of the time you'd write one or two words and a week from then when you look back at that issue, you don't, you don't even remember what it was about. Well, no more. This workflow definitely can be improved with AI and we'll do just that. We select in the resource dropdown the type issue and operation is create. The project owner is your GitLab username or the GitLab group where your project is under. 
And here is where the magic happens. The title and the body of the issue, we simply let AI handle that boring part. We can also assign the issue to someone, but we won't do that for now. So I have this project called K8 Test Toolkit, which is basically my Kubernetes platform, which I want to show up in a future video. So subscribe if you want to see that. And this lives under a group called Development Platform. So that would be the project owner. To let AI define fields, you can click this star looking button, then immediately click delete so you can see the underlying syntax so you can better customize it. The syntax starts with dollar from AI, meaning AI would fill this in and you basically give it the prompt or the guideline to generate the value for this field. First, you pick a name. In this case, title is good enough. And the second parameter is the description. This will let the AI know what to put in this field. The last argument here is the type, which in this case is a string. Let me write a simple description here, title of the issue. And for the body, we want what the issue is about and potential solutions. This way, the AI can actually come up with solutions for us. Why not? One more important thing, I suggest that you always set the tool description manually, telling it when to use the tools, in which situation. Here, let's simply write create an issue in GitLab. And that's it for now. You created your first MCP server. It was that easy. But before we go test this out, I want to show you the sheer number of tools you can add to this MCP server and expose to AI applications. I mean, there's everything here from Google Sheets to Jira to Grafana, Postgres, you name it. Again, link to NA10 in the video description. Now we go to VS Code, which will act as our MCP client in this case. And let's add this server we just created. First, open the command palette, Ctrl Shift P, type MCP, and there you have the option to add a server. And the option is to add one using HTTP. And here we paste the URL we got from NA10, save it as user settings, so it's available for all the projects. We can give a nicer name like NA10-MCP. Now, if I open the GitHub Copilot agent, you can already see it says new tools are available and prompts me to refresh. Here I got an error, but actually if you look at the output, it's a response from NA10 telling me that the workflow is not yet active and that I need to go activate the workflow. Let's do exactly that. So to integrate it properly with VS Code, let's use the production URL and on the top right, let's toggle this workflow to active. I click refresh and VS Code was able to connect to my NA10 MCP server. And now in the list of tools available to the co-pilot, I can see the three tools exposed by my MCP server, Website Scraper, GitLab, and Discord. Let's try it out. Can you create a GitLab issue reminding me to update Grafana operator to 5.17.0 and include the selected code snippets and the file that needs the change? Here is where the context of this AI chatbot comes in. It knows what code I have selected and what the active file is. It asks me for permission to use the tool and even shows me what parameters it will send to that tool. This looks good. Let's go ahead and execute it. Okay, I got an error and here you can't really see, but I simply had the wrong project owner set up in the GitLab tool in NA10. I had my own username, but this project is owned by a group. Like I mentioned, it's not owned by myself. It's owned by my development platform group on GitLab. Having fixed that, I asked the chatbot to try again and it says it did it and even included a helpful link to the GitLab issue. Let's check it out. And yeah, here we have a nicely formatted GitLab issue containing the file name and code snippets. Okay, I'd rather it use relative file path instead of absolute file path, but yeah, this is actually awesome. Now I can think of tons of tools I want to add to this MCP server and use them directly from VS Code. For example, I have a lot of information stored in Notion from technical articles to different open source projects I want to explore. Let's define a new tool in our MCP server using Notion. And this tool's description will be grab technical articles from Notion. I'm selecting my Notion account credentials that I already have set up in NA10. The resource will be database pages, get many is the operation, which is basically a search operation and I will pick one of my databases. The one called knowledge database is what I'm looking for. Let's check the return all 
option so that we get all of the results. And here is where the magic happens again. We let AI define the filters. So for filter, we select any, which is basically an or type filter. And we want the name or the description to contain some keyword. Let's let AI generate this property. Let's give it a suggestive name and a description. Let's name it search term and the description will be the search term for finding articles. Let's do the same for the description field. Keep in mind when defining these variables that you can have two with the same name. So I'm naming this search term two. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And that's it. That was very easy. And the nice thing is that when we change stuff in the MCP server, it notifies the client in real time. And that's how this warning appears right here in VS Code, prompting us to restart the MCP client. And now we have four tools since we added the Notion tool. So now what we can do in the GitLab Copilot agent is ask questions like, do I have any Notions article about Argo CD application sets? Now for the first time, it prompts us to allow this new tool. And in this case, it says it couldn't find any. Now, I know for sure I have something, so let's try to reprompt it. Make sure to search for different related search terms. So it tries again, and now it came up with an article I have about Argo CD application sets. And it also includes a link to the Notion page and the description. So now we can go further with our automation and integrate these various tools. Let's actually have a bit of fun. Let's ask the AI if we could apply the concept of Argo CD application sets in this repository. And sure enough, it gives me some ideas and ways I could use that along with some code snippets and explanation. That's great, but this would be forever forgotten about. Well, unless we can create an issue on GitLab. So let's tell it, can you create a GitLab issue for this and include this information? And it knows what I'm referring to. And sure enough, it did it. Let's check it out. So now I have two GitLab issues. This new one contains all of the explanations and examples from the chat. That's awesome. This is a very good example of how AI can enhance your development workflow. Let's move things even further. I don't even want to write the code anymore, actually, especially in cases where it's just boring version changes. So let's create a new GitLab tool. This time, the resource will be filed and operation will be added. And we will allow AI to modify files and create branches for us. For the file path, we let AI decide. And for the file content, we can do the same. Now we want it to come up with some comment message in the committison style. And we want this commit and the changes to be on a separate branch. And why not let AI decide the branch name as well? Oh man, I, I feel like I'm cheating here. Let's name this tool open merge request and the description for this tool will be edits a file and then opens a merge request in GitLab. So let's resume our hypothetical workflow. I asked the agent, do you remember what I wanted to do with the Grafana operator? And sure enough, it remembers I wanted to update it to version 5.17.0. Let's see if you can ask it to open a GitLab merge request for this. Well, it failed. And I have an idea why. Let me try to prompt it to use relative file path since I remember it used the absolute file path in the previous example. Mm. Okay, that didn't work either. So what we can do is debug the executions in NA10. And here from the executions tab, you can see exactly what went wrong. The error is you can only create or edit files when you are on a branch. Interesting, apparently this only works if I select the start branch option and let's always create new branches. And here I select to always create the new branches from the main branch. Let's save it and try again. Restart the MCP client and prompt it to try again. And oh my God, this actually worked. Let's go check it out in GitLab. This is the new branch. It has a commit and all the desired changes on it. That's actually amazing. One thing it didn't do is start a merge request. So let's rename this tool as it doesn't really reflect what it does. Let's rename it create branch and edit file. And let's also change the description. So the built-in GitLab tool doesn't support creating merge requests, but we can always use the generic HTTP call tool in NA10 with our GitLab credentials 
and you can create this tool yourself armed with the knowledge you have so far and the official GitLab API documentation. For now, let's test the Discord tool by asking someone nicely on Discord to create this merge request for this branch. And there we go, the message has been delivered. It actually sends the message for us. And there you have it. We've turned NA10 into a powerful MCP server exposing custom automation tools directly to an AI agent like GitHub Copilot within VS Code. We saw how easy it is to set up and integrate tools for GitLab, Notion, Discord, and many more. Now it's up to you to think about all the possibilities. We saw automating issue creation with context, searching the knowledge base without leaving our code editor, and even triggering complex workflows like creating branches. And all of that was done by using natural language prompts. This is a fantastic way to reduce context switching and seriously boost your development productivity. If you're excited to try this out, definitely check out NA10. Remember, you can self-host it completely for free, or if you prefer the convenience, you can also sign up for the cloud version. There's a link in the description below. Using it gives me a small commission at no extra cost for you. And that's a great way to support the channel. So thank you if you do. What kind of tools will you build with NA10 and MCP? I'd love to hear all your ideas in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the video reach more people. And of course, subscribe to Let's Talk Dev for more videos on software development, automation, and maybe even that deep dive into my Kubernetes toolkit I mentioned. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.